evenly among themselves. All the while at the water holes, the situation becomes more and more serious. As thunderstorms threaten to break the desperate grip of the dry season, bull elephants line up patiently in a well-established hierarchy, waiting their turn to drink. This is an organized rotation of dominant individuals and small groups of allies, sometimes standing 50 deep, waiting hours for their turn at the meager muddy pools. The female herds with their babies are much more anxious about traveling across open areas and drinking at the water holes. This year, the herds are under extra stress. The distances they have to travel daily between feeding grounds and water has been made even greater by a huge fire that has swept through the northern part of Botswana. They are tired and edgy, and there is an undercurrent of thinly suppressed panic in the nervous herds. Quite often, two or three breeding groups move in together causing confusion at the waterhole. The old matriarchs and mothers keep their young under careful surveillance, never letting them get more than a trunk length away. They have carried their babies in pregnancy for nearly two years, and the bond between mother and calf is so powerful that it will last their entire lives. A young bull calf, barely two months old, arrives with the group. His back is freshly caked with mud where his mother has bathed him to prevent sunburn. The herd spends time enjoying a drink and a splash before setting off again in the late afternoon. The walk back to the feeding grounds will be challenging as the hot winds of October blow up a dust storm that will rage through the night. Early the next morning, it appears something has gone terribly wrong in the night. The young calf with the muddy back has somehow become separated from his herd in the dust and darkness, and now he finds himself utterly and desperately alone. Elephants with their deep social bonds are known to adopt stranded orphans. If he can attach himself to other elephants or find his own herd very soon, he stands a good chance of survival. The little calf is as helpless and confused as a human infant would be without his mother. It's obvious that he can smell her and the herd in their dung surrounding the pools, and he spends time sniffing at the familiar, comforting smells. He also picks up the scent of elephants on the trees where they have rubbed themselves after mud bathing. In his confused and panicked state, he leans up against the tree as if it were his mother's leg, trying vainly to draw some comforting, reassuring gesture from an unyielding, inanimate object. After his first hours alone, help arrives in the form of a few huge elephant bulls. His desperation for contact is obvious as he approaches the adults to greet them. With little more than a brief inspection, the bulls mysteriously ignore the little waif as they make their way to the waterhole. 
calf struggles along in their wake, calling frantically for attention. The calf is still totally dependent on milk. He can't even drink water for himself, and as the temperature steadily rises into the hundreds, he becomes more and more thirsty. Without the bulk of his mother to protect him from the sun, dehydration begins to set in. Desperately thirsty, and now even more confused, he attempts to suckle from the bulls at the water hole. At first, the adults ignore the pitiful advances of the youngster, but as he becomes more persistent, their indifference turns to anger. In the water, he is repeatedly kicked by one of the bulls. The blows from such a huge animal to the soft young head obviously stun and damage him. Even after such violent treatment, the urge to be close is too powerful, and he struggles after the adults. Like an abused child, he knows nothing else to do but follow and keep trying to make a friend. It's midday now and fiercely hot. The temperature in the sun is over 120 degrees, and the bulls have retreated to the sparse shade of some nearby trees. The orphan continues desperately to seek attention and comfort, but is continually rejected. His utter confusion and lack of understanding of what is happening to him is obvious. He spends the hottest part of the day dejectedly circling the herd in the baking sun. As the bulls start to leave in the afternoon, the tiny stray tries to follow and the rejections begin to get more violent. This aggressive behavior is highly unusual considering the gentle and tender nature of elephant social life. The calf retires to a small grove of trees where he stands shivering and twitching in what appears to be a state of complete nervous collapse. The 
The resilience of this little beast, however, is remarkable, and his will to live drives him back out into the open. He once again attempts to suckle, this time on a tree, before heading back to the water hole. Having collapsed at the edge, he barely manages to drag himself into the mud. At last it seems there is real hope when a herd of cows with a young calf his age suddenly arrives to drink. As he persists in getting close to the herd's own calf, the reaction of the females is shocking. This would be the ideal group to adopt the stray. With young calves of their own, the females are lactating and their overpowering maternal instinct should be stimulated by the calf. But instead, he is once again violently rejected. With remarkable tenacity, he keeps following. But now, the matriarch has had enough and this time actually tries to kill the bewildered baby. It's obvious that something is dramatically wrong. Is this violent reaction an indication of the stress the elephants are under? Can the females simply not afford the energy to adopt the youngster because this year's meager resources are barely enough to raise their own offspring? Is there something physically wrong with the baby that the other animals can sense and want to avoid? Whatever the answer, time is running out now. As the sun sets, the final act in this desperate tragedy of a day begins to unfold. Under the very eyes of bulls who would normally savagely defend a calf, the executioners of the night move in. Although his death is violent and brutal, it is merciful at the same time. He will not have to endure another minute of the loneliness, bewilderment and pain that was this terrible day. Dawn at the waterhole shows no evidence of the previous day's events. Life in Africa goes on with a ceaseless, uninterrupted rhythm. Every event has its place and fits seamlessly into the flow of days and nights. <laughs> 